Hey what's up everybody it's Peter and today I'm going to give you some little insights in Premiere Pro especially for beginners if you have never used the program before I can really recommend it to watch it till the end so this is not a scripted tutorial I'm gonna explain very slow and just some thoughts about it in the end you are able to do some small edits with basic cuts and just putting some sound effects in dropping some music underneath <laughs> The whole program has a huge variety of functions and I just want to really cover the really basic ones to get you started. If you have any questions about things I say in the tutorial just drop me a comment down below and probably I can cover this in a later tutorial. I can't speak that loud today because it's really early in the morning. These walls here are literally like paper. The neighbors probably get a little bit angry but I can come very close to the microphone and you should be able to hear me properly all right I would say let's hop into Premiere Pro first I really don't want to say jump because everybody's saying jump so I say let's hop into Premiere Pro probably there are some other people who are also using this wording but I haven't heard any before so let's go I'm using the latest version of Premiere Pro and it costs about 60 euros a month so after you started the program, the first thing you should do is starting a new project. You can do that by just clicking on new project. You can put in the name, then just put in the location where you want to save the Premiere profile. Put it in a location where you can find it easily. I won't explain what all of these things you are doing because I think it's not necessary for a basic tutorial. We just press OK, so just put in the name, press OK. So then the program is open. Basically, you can see four windows. It's the source monitor, the program monitor, the project monitor and the timeline. In the project monitor, you can put all kind of stuff. So basically all the stuff you want to put in the edit, like music, sound effects, overlays, typography, video, whatever you can put it in the project monitor to just have it in one space and then you can just drag and drop it into the timeline but first you want to create a sequence a sequence is like a canvas for a painter and there you can put all the stuff together and just make an edit out of it for creating a sequence you can just go down to new item and then sequence here are a lot of sequence presets so for all kind of different cameras different frame rates different like random modes and stuff so there is really like plenty of different options most of you guys have a dslr or probably an iphone so you'll go to digital dslr now you can choose the resolution if you just have full hd clips it makes sense to take the 1080p because that stands also for like full hd for like 1920 to 1080 but you can also go just on settings and then you can type it in by yourself if you have a really special like resolution or you want to have it in 4k or whatever just do it that way so these presets here are pretty just simple you can just click on it you can choose the frame rate so in this case we using a dslr 1080p 25 frames per second here you can name the sequence in this case i also will name it to my video it's like pk 00701 you can name it like ever you want just make sure that you can find it later on and then you press ok and what happens now is you have the timeline before it was like that in the timeline you have different video tracks like the upper three are video tracks you can see it easily because of the v1 v2 and v3 and the lower three are like audio tracks you can see it easily by a1 a2 a3 enable them or disable them i would always keep everything what's in the timeline enabled you have the timeline marker the position where the timeline marker is will show up in the program monitor but we are going to start organizing some stuff in the project window to keep you organized from the beginning i can really recommend you to just make folders for every different asset when i say asset i'm talking about like music sound effects typography stuff after effects compositions so all the things i already said now the sequence we did we just put in the sequence folder we can import some footage that's basically by going into the video bin folder and then you can just hit command i then it opens basically your finder and then you can just import some footage i just import some drone stuff just highlight everything and press import so now you have all the drone stuff inside your video bin to go 
back to the like overview of all bins you can just press this button here and then you are back where all of your bins are and now we just double click on the drone clip and it will show up in the source monitor the source monitor is basically a monitor which will preview everything you have in your project monitor and you just double click on it and then it just goes up here first or you can also just import the whole clip straight away and um, what this warning here is saying i gonna explain you later but in this case you can also just drag the whole clip into the timeline and then you can just start editing but in this case i can show you other workflow but it's really up to you so just double click on it and it will show up here in the source monitor you can drag these marker left to right left at the beginning of the clip right is at the end pretty self-explanatory if you want just to play back the whole clip you can just press space and then it just plays back like here but this clip now is pretty long it's about 30 seconds long and you want to cut out just a small part of it i want to start here where the movement of the drone is starting and then you can just press i for in then you just set it here a little marker then you go all the way to the spot where you want to go out of the clip and you press o and now you just set it the marker for in and the marker for the out point and everything in between is highlighted that means if you now drag the clip into the timeline it just will take this portion of the clip so what you do now is you either just import the video file you can just easily do it by clicking on this little icon here and then it shows up with drag videos only if you have a clip with audio as well in this case the drone doesn't record any audio that's why this here for the audio track is not highlighted so in this case i can just drag the video in a normal clip of a camera you can also just drag the audio if you just did some like sound foley stuff you just recorded some trains passing by or just some doors opening and you want to use it later on as a sound effect and you just want to extract the audio you can drag the single audio too if you want to import both into the timeline you can just drop on the whole image press the left mouse key and just drag everything in in this case like i already said the drone wasn't recording any audio so that's why here is just one layer and usually there should be both what this warning means is every time if you put a video clip the first time into a timeline and the timeline settings are not matching to the video settings by resolution or by frame rate or by different other metadata then it will show up this warning message one time do you want to keep this timeline settings or do you want to change the sequence settings to the settings of the clip in this case the drone recorded in 30 frames per second we want to keep the timeline settings just because it's easier later on if you have a lot of different video clips with different resolutions with different frame rates so for example if you have some clips of your iphone and the iphone shoots in 60 fps you have some drone footage and the drone is shooting in 30 fps and you have just some like dsrr camera footage which shoots in 25 fr frames per second and you drag all the clips into the timeline timeline will always make sure that every clip will have 25 frames per second also here same function as in the source monitor the right window the program monitor shows everything what's in the timeline and yeah the source monitor like i already said is just like a small preview for the project monitor if you click on something it shows always up in the source monitor and you decide all right i want to have this portion of the clip you drag it in the timeline and now it will show up on the program monitor that's why the images are open on, on both monitors also here you can just like press space and then the clip starts and if you press space again it just ends or you can just drag the marker as well you can see here on this monitor the whole image is looking a lot more cropped in like in this monitor that's because we were setting up the timeline in 1080p but the clip actually is 4k so you need to just scale down everything a little bit because it's way too much resolution for this timeline because 4k has a double amount of resolution as full hd has so you need to scale down the whole image by pressing the right mouse key and just go to set to frame size and now the image has a right size everything what i just explained we can do with another clip now this clip is pretty cool here in the beginning you can see i did some really terrible shakes with the drone that's why i don't want to have this portion in the timeline here the drone starts moving this is pretty cool so i decide to press i here we go a little bit further here the drone starts stopping 
So I press O here. Again, I just drag the video track in the timeline and put it right next to the clip I choose before. And also here, it's scaled up way too high. So here I can press the right mouse key, go to set to frame size and the program will put it in the right frame size. So now we have these two clips and you can just play it back and that's basically already a like kind of a small edit. For me in personal, I have a different workflow. So I'm not using the source monitor all the time to just extract the portion I want to have in the timeline. I drop all the footage I have always into the timeline. Also here, keep existing settings. I am gonna set everything to the frame size. And now I just do the in and out points straight in the timeline. So you just press space and here the same like I had in the source monitor. By pressing C on the keyboard, then the razor tool will show up and you can just cut the layer on all different spots. By pressing command Z, you can just go back. If you made a mistake, it's always nice to have this option. So now you just press C and I don't want to have this portion. So I just delete it by clicking on it and pressing the delete key on the keyboard. And now also here I want to stop when the drone is like going into the clouds. Also here I press C for the razor tool. I just click on the layer where I want to have the cut and then I just go on the rest of the portion and just press delete. And I have the same thing actually as I did in the source monitor, but I, I did it in the timeline. So there are a huge variety of workflows. I would never say this is a right workflow or this is a wrong workflow. Always do the workflow which fits best for your needs. Just do it like that. Now a little tip by the way, if you really mess up the whole workspace, like now it's pretty clean, you have the four windows, but you mess it up in a way like you just put something in here and then you open up this and now it looks like that. You don't know how to reorganize everything and you just think shit. What am I doing? You just go to window, go to workspaces and you go to reset to save layout. And now everything is like in the beginning, everything is reorganized again. All right, so what I do now is I just cut out all the parts of the videos I want to use in the final edit. I just speed it up a little bit. So now I just cut out all the parts I want to use in the edit. Now the next thing what we can do is just putting some colors on it because these images are looking pretty flat. To put a color correction on top of your clips, you just go back to the project monitor, open the new item tab and just click on adjustment layer. And I want to have it in full HD again. And I want to have it in 25 frames per second because these are the settings we have in the timeline. So usually I never change anything here. I just always press OK. An adjustment layer is basically an extra layer for putting effects on and it will affect everything what is underneath the adjustment layer. So you go to the effects tab here like in here and every effect in Premiere Pro is inside this section actually. There are really a lot of effects. Here's really crazy stuff going on. You can be very creative with putting things just together, but there are some basic effects everybody should need to know. And I just cover these effects. For the colors, it's the Lumetri color effect. Then the Lumetri color effect will show up here and you can just drag it on the adjustment layer by clicking the left mouse key. So now if you click on the adjustment layer, you can go to the effect controls on the source monitor. So this is the second tab in the source monitor. We just talked about the source monitor with previewing your, your footage. The second tab is the effect controls and then all of these options will show up. And what you can do with this here is you can just scale up the image however you want, move it from left to right. You can just rotate it. And if you want to just reset everything, you have these arrows here in the ending and you can just reset it again to the settings in the beginning. But now we should go on with putting some nice colors in the video. So let's go back to the Lumetri color effect. You can just adjust like brightness, the contrast here. In this case, there is not much contrast in it. You can just adjust the temperature if you like it a little bit warmer or a little bit cooler. You have pre, build it LUTs from the program itself. You can just put it like a LUT on it. Here in this case, I like this one. So this is now a little bit better than before. It was really flat. And now you have some really simple color correction. Yeah, now you have the colors. You already have some moving pictures. And what you do in the end is you just add some sound. There you can just go back to the project monitor, click on your music bin and then you press command I for import again and then you just go to your workspace to music 
and then you just go to music bed in my case i have a lot of music from there and then you just import the music you like in this case i just do these four songs also here if you just double click on the music the audio waveform will show up in the source monitor and you can just play it back by pressing the space in this case you can just drag the audio in that's why also here is just the drag audio only is highlighted and the video is not highlighted because self-explanatory you don't have any view in it so just drag it underneath it and then it will show up so now we have the whole audio track underneath it and now we have a city and some audio We can spice it up even more if we put some sound effects in. If you have any sound effects, it's nice. If not, you can buy some or you can go to the YouTube library. There are a lot of free sound effects or you can go to freesound.org and then you can download all sound effects for free. That's also pretty cool. In this case, I just want to import like a city ambience. Here we have a clip where some cars are driving. Sounds a little bit like city ambience. So also here I just I just mark a small portion of this clip because it's very long. So I press I for the in point and O for the out point. Now just this section is highlighted and I can put it underneath the music. And one important thing if you use sound is just do it very subtle that the viewer don't even notice that there is a sound effect in it. If you start it now. Yes. And now the only thing you need to do is just subscribe to this channel, ring the bell and just drop a comment down below if you have any more advice for other tutorials. Check out one of my latest posts. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. See ya.